Hi friends, in this session we study about the normal distribution. Look at your own wall, you will see the pictures of uh, many mathematicians are there. So, uh, there you see the picture of Eddie Murray, Carl Frederick Gass, Pierre as Laplace, Francis Galton, Adolf Gitlet, Ronald Fischer. These are all the mathematicians who gave their uh, valuable contribution in the theory of normal distribution. So, first I would like to explain about the history of normal distribution. Here, first I would like to explain you about the history. The normal distribution was first discovered by the English mathematician Dr. Addy Mori. Normal distribution was rediscovered by Gaussian and Laplace in 1812. That is the reason that the normal distribution is also called as Gaussian Laplace distribution or simply as Gaussian distribution. Later on, French mathematician Pierre S. Laplace developed this principle. This principle was also used and developed by Cutlet, Galton, and Fisher. So, this was all about the history of this normal distribution, the contribution of the mathematicians uh, we have explained here. Uh, now, uh, I would like to explain the meaning and development of normal distribution. So, here you see the meaning and development of normal distribution. The perfectly smooth and symmetrical curve resulting from the expansion of binomial q plus p power n when n approaches to infinity is known as the normal curve. So, here you see the binomial distribution q plus p whole power n when n approaches to infinity is known as the normal curve. Thus, the normal curve may be considered as the limit to what with the binomial distribution approaches as n increases to infinity here n increases to infinity alternatively we can say that the normal curve represent a continuous and infinite binomial distribution when neither p or q is very small so this is the meaning and development of this normal distribution hi friends here i would like to explain you this binomial and normal uh, probable distribution of frequency through this graph so, here you see in this graph, uh, the histogram is there. The histogram shows the binomial probable distribution of frequency here you see. So, this is the binomial probable distribution of frequency. And by this frequency curve, you see on the right, uh, in the right color, uh, it is the normal probable distribution of frequency. So, this is the curve by which we could draw the uh, normal probable distribution of frequency curve. Now, I explain you uh, in a detail, in little bit detail about this all. So, look at here, this curve, you see, this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. So, this is our origin is here and this is our normal curve we have. So, you see in the normal curve, it is a bell-shaped curve. Uh, it is just like a bell. And uh, if I, uh, there is one hump is here. Uh, we are not interested in the y ordinate, we are interested in the region under this curve. So, if I draw a line through this hump on x axis, just a moment, if I draw this small line here, so this line will divide this curve into equal parts, the two equal segment or the e equal region one on the right side, other one on the left side. The 50% region would be on right side and 50% would be on left side. It is a symmetrical, the line of symmetry it is also. This is our x-axis, on this point on x-axis, it represent our, uh, as our the, this, uh, uh, this point will represent x-bar, the measure of central tendency. The x-bar, it would be the median would be there, and the mod would be here. So, it is also called the unimodal. The, all the frequency distribution lie on the same point on this x-axis. So, on the right side, you see the 50 percent is the numbers, the terms greater than x bar, the greater than mean would be on the right side of this and the smaller than mean, the terms would be on the left side. So, these are our x values we are putting here and this is our x bar here. Now, you see, we see on the right side, there are the point of inflections. There are different point of inflections we will get here. The point of inflection is what? It is the change in direction of the curve from one direction to other direction. The change, you know, curve change its direction. 
uh, from its usual direction then it is called the point of inflection so the one point of inflection i explain you uh, this is this one where the curve change its direction and here you see the curve is going in this way and here also this curve change its direction and the curve is going in the same manner here it changes our second point of inflection and the third point of inflection you look at here this is the third point of inflection on the right side the same way we get the point of inflection on the left side we get first here we get second here and we get third here so these are all the three points of inflection on the both side of this uh, line of symmetry uh, uh, x bar uh, and this uh, we could pay, uh, say this point is n or at the a we could put for this point so here a x bar we are getting uh, on the x bar and between a uh, this line and this is the line of symmetry on the right side on the left side so now i put uh, i draw one line from this first point of inflection on the right side so i get here this line okay another line i draw through this and the third line i draw from this point so these three lines i have drawn here the same way i draw the line on the left side also another line i am drawing here and the third line i am drawing here so this is the line i have drawn here the uh, area uh, uh, in this curve the covered by this curve is 100 percent up to infinite and between two lines these two lines that we have to see what would the area or what are this point on x-axis the on axis on x-axis this point would be x bar plus sigma x bar plus two sigma and x bar plus three sigma because they at the standard deviation wherever the standard deviation occur the inflection would take place on the right side as well as left side if I if we see here on the left side the x bar minus sigma x bar minus 2 sigma and x bar minus 3 sigma now I explain in detail this uh, by the other graph so look at here this is our normal distribution curve and uh, you look at here uh, this is our x bar the line of symmetry we are getting here it is the bell shaped normal curve we have this is our x axis and this is our y axis so x axis we say it is our axis scale also okay so these are our axis scale uh, we have now you see uh, it is the first inflection point we have here on the right side so it would be the point on the x axis x bar plus sigma it is the first sigma first inflection point and that is the second inflection point on the curve on the x axis if we draw a perpendicular then we get the x bar plus two sigma and these are our third inflection point of inflection here the x bar plus three sigma on the left side would be the same x bar minus sigma x bar minus 2 sigma x bar minus 3 sigma now we see the area uh, between uh, minus sigma and plus sigma x bar minus sigma x bar plus sigma what would the area would be there so the area would be 68.26 percent area lie between uh, x bar minus sigma and x bar plus sigma if we convert this into z scale so we get x bar is equal to zero so we we, we have the formula for the z scale the conversion formula z is equal to x minus x bar over sigma so this is the way if we put here on this the instead of x bar x we have to put x bar here x bar minus x bar which is zero zero over sigma whatever the sigma we will get the value zero so the value of z would be zero if we get here um, x bar plus sigma so for that we get the z value so I explain you here how we get this so z is equal to it is x bar plus sigma the point uh, x coordinate is x bar plus sigma minus x bar x bar this x bar we are putting here and in denominator you see it is sigma so both will eliminate each other x bar positive negative and z is equal to sigma over sigma sigma over sigma we get here one so these are our one and in the same way similarly we do the following uh, other 
प्लस टू एंड प्लस थ्री एंड माइनस वन माइनस टू माइनस थ्री ऑन द जेड स्केल सो वी गेट द वैल्यू इन द जेड स्केल देन वी सी इन द टेबल द नॉर्मल कर द जेड वैल्यू टेबल वी सी द रीजन वॉट एवर द प्रॉबिलिटी कम्स हेयर वाट वाट इज द प्रोपोर्सन वी गेट ओवर दियर सो दैट सोस द प्रॉबिलिटी सो इन दिस वे वी कूड इट इज द कंटिन्यूस बेसिकली द फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज कंटिन्यूस any value we can take the rational irrational whatever the value you have you can find out here so here you see uh, between minus 1 and plus 1 you see the region 68.26% and between plus 2 and minus 2 you see the region uh, is 95.44% area is there and uh, minus 3 and 3 between you see it is 99.74% area lies between these two Oh, x bar minus three sigma and x bar plus three sigma. So this is the basic concept of normal distribution curve. It is the basic concept of normal curve. In detail, we study this all in our next session. Before this, I would like to explain about the assumptions of normal distribution. So here I explain you the assumptions of normal distribution. Uh, here I explain you the assumptions of normal distribution. Uh, the following. Uh, are the four fundamental assumptions or conditions prevail among the factors affecting the individual events on which a normal distribution of Hausdorff relation is based uh, first is the independent factors the forces affecting events must be independent of one another just like a head and tail uh, it should be independent of each other it, there, there should not be any sort of uh, intersection between two events Uh, second one is numerous fact numerous factors it should be the causal forces must be numerous and equal weight it should be of uh, causal forces and the equal weight means it should be equal on all the uh, events uh, if you are tossing a coin five times so the equal forces the uh, occurring head should be 1 by 2 and uh, all the times it should be 1 by 2 so it should not change according to the number of events the symmetry the operation of the causal forces must be such that the positive deviation from the mean is ba are balanced as to magnitude and number by negative deviation from the mean as we have seen in the diagram here positive and negative deviation you are seeing uh, uh, is same on the both side and the uh, final we see the homogeneity homogeneity this focus must uh, be the same over the population from which the observation are drawn uh, this force is uh, must be same over the population over the population because we are taking the sample from the population or uh, it should be same in the whole population so these are all about the normal distribution the basic concept in the next session we study about how to find out the uh, probability distribution through this normal curve how we get out the probability thank you